The next step that we have to do in the finite element method is to develop a simpler set of equations. I ideally, we're going to have a, uh, a linear system of equations. Um, and we can, for this problem, come up with a linear, uh, linear algebraic system of equations. Actually, for, uh, and you can do that in general for, uh, for steady state problems. But for transient problems, uh, usually the best you can come up with, it with is a set of uh, ordinary differential equations, but in, in either case we've simplified uh, we've Im simplified the, the problem quite a bit. So, um, alright. The, the best way that I can think of to go through how this all works, uh, because it's a little bit complicated, uh, but it's is, is to compare it to um, lin least squares regression that we did before, because it's completely analogous. So, Remember when we did least squares of regression, so we had some data, okay, and we wanted to fit a line, whoa, we wanted to fit a line, so pretend that's a straight line, we wanted to fit a line or, or some polynomial uh, to that data, and uh, that's what we were given. Uh, so that was the problem, and what we did was we assumed that this function took the form uh, alpha not x to the 0, which is 1, plus alpha 1x to the 1, which is, so So we just have alpha not plus alpha 1 times x, and that's our equation for this line. Uh, and then the, the other thing that we, ha we could do is we could define something that we called, we, so we had some error at each point i. So we have um, points along this are um, i, i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, so at every i we have a point, and so this is uh, the discrete domain, and uh, so this this approximating function we called, alright, we called y hat, alright, so y hat is equal to that. Good, uh, and then uh, what we did is we, we, the whole problem was to pick alpha, I'm just going to say, well, pick alpha naught and alpha 1 such that we, w and we, we had to define some criteria. And the criterion that we defined is we say the sum uh, from i equals 1 to n all the way however many, and I'm, I'm actually going to use k equals 1 to n because I'm going to use i for something else here. Um, let me write this in better. Uh, and all right, so I'm going to call this epsilon k, such that the sum of that of uh, e i squared uh, is minimized. Is minimized. We wanted to find the the minimum, minimize the sum of the squared uh, residual, and that's great. And it turned out what we what we were able to do for that was we we took the the partial with respect to I'm just going to call this so here's where it, alpha i because we i zero i one and and we could have more of the sum from i equals well sorry, excuse me, from k equals 1, that's why I used i, to n of um, of e k squared. Okay, so, and, and, and we set that equal to 0. And so we did this for each alpha i, and so there were two of them, and so what we came up with in the end was uh, two equations, and each of these equations, in, in this, this case we had two equations because we had alpha naught and alpha 1, only two co coefficients. We had two equations, but of course each of these equations had a big fat sum in it. And we, we couldn't just sim uh, solve them in isolation, we needed to sort of uh, use one to get the other. So we had to solve them uh, simultaneously, but, and, and those were called the normal equations. Uh, so I'll just note that there's a more general way to formulate this problem, uh, but the first step then I'm going to take is, is you realize we could do this uh, if we had, so what would you do if we had an infinite number of points? Infinite. So we don't just have 
a finite number of points uh, going from k equals 1 to whatever, we've got an infinite number of points. Well, uh, what we usually do, and, and this is a little bit hand wavy, but it, it'll help you get the intuition behind what we're doing here, is we can replace that summation with an integral, and it's actually an integral across the solution domain, uh, and then that would be uh, the error a k squared, um, and then it's the the d d. So this is solution domain partial with respect to alpha i of that, and set that equal to zero for for each alpha i. So this is sort of a generalization of that. You can actually generalize that even more, and it becomes uh, the integral across the solution domain of uh, e. And so, yeah, sorry. This, so this, uh, get my eraser. This actually was an e k here instead of e k, because it's more general than that. It's e as a function of x. So at every point x, we have a, we have some error. Um, it's, it's actually a residual. Okay. So that is it. And then, so we can generalize this even more to be e times what we call wi um, dd and that's set equal to zero and it just so happens then in this case so this case is a special case of this more general problem where we had uh, wi wi is equal to the partial uh, with respect to alpha i of e of x so you plug that in and you you get the e squared because you can pull the you can pull the partial uh, outside of this integral and that's what you get and and you see we have this big integral which is which is like a summation okay so that's the background that we need uh, to understand what we're even doing here for how we're developing our simpler equations to approximate the solution for each element. So the first thing we do actually is is we pick uh, what the book calls approximation functions. Um, they're actually first we need to pick uh, they're actually basis functions. We need to pick basis functions. Uh, I know that sounds that sounds uh, intimidating and everything, but it, really all that um, all we're going to do is we're going to pick. Uh, a linear, we're going to pick linear basis functions uh, and let me actually give you a visualization of this, let's see so whoa. so what we do is the basis functions that we pick, so this is the entire um, interval, so this is this is x naught and this would be x final uh, and then we, I think we had one, two one, two, three, four units here. And the basis functions, what we use is um, these linear, well, they're called, yeah, here we go. They go like this. All right. So these are the basis functions. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, in in the book, uh, they call them uh, n one and n two and and um, actually, I think I left out. I think we would actually have the other half of this one here, and we might have the other half of this one here. Okay, uh, so that's what we have, uh, and then what the book calls this is n one. And this one right here is n2, and that's on this domain. So that's for this element here, for this first segment, that's n1, that's n2. And then for the next segment, uh, you would call this one uh, the new n1, and you would call that one the new n2, and, and so forth. Um, but you get the idea. So we're only looking, uh, we're only looking at, one, at one element at a time. So we're just looking at this here. And so... Uh, we have that and we call that, so we say uh, t 
and that's I'm going to call that T squiggly because it's an approximation and it's going to be n1 and that's a function of x by the way times t1 plus n2 of x times t2 and so what that means is that we just have a linear change in our temperature also uh, what we can do is we can write uh, we can write the original function so we plug this into our original so we have d second derivative of t uh, with respect to x mine well it's plus I think plus f of x uh, equals zero uh, then so let's go down a little bit then we that means we plug in this t squiggly here we get t squiggly dx plus f of x um, is equal to or, or we could say minus so it normally that would be equal to zero um, but it's not equal to zero because because we have this well right here we have this plus or minus however we choose to define it some error or some residual term I'm gonna put it on this side and say that's our error so we have so we have the this on this side and then we have a residual on the other side okay well now we have essentially the same situation we can look we have essentially the same situation as we had over here where we had so we had this integral of e of x w i d d so we have the integral across the entire solution domain of e of x and this is the e of x that we're going to use uh, w i uh, d d and set that equal to zero and what we're going to do is let let w i equal n i of x so uh, when we let w i equal n i of x in that case it's called the Galerkin Galerkin method so rewriting this entire thing we have the integral across the solution domain of e of x n i of x d d which is equal to uh, the integral across the solution domain of second of t squiggly uh, with respect to x plus f of x and all of this times n i of x d d and actually what we can do here is instead of d d we we actually have uh, this isn't just erase this isn't just this is actually going from x1 to x2 or whatever our, our x1 yeah n1 and n2 x1 x2 and and we'll just re redefine any of our x's to be x1 and x2 so this will work for any for any segment uh, n y n i of x uh, dx okay so hopefully you can see that we're solving a similar problem to the one that we solved before whereas before we were looking and we were doing this summation and we were multiplying we had the special case where with where this wi was equal to the partial uh, with respect to these alpha i constants uh, of, of e of x we're doing a similar thing but we chose a different weighting function and uh, we have this integral so we're, we're doing an infinite summation so we have an infinite number of points uh, which is in, instead of just a finite number of points that we had in, in the other case